bad, detective. Real bad. <sighs> that strawberry never had a chance. Looks like somebody made a fruit salad out of that strawberry. What are we gonna do? I'll tell you what we're gonna do. We're gonna use DNA to identify that sweet, precious little strawberry. And then you can bet your dollar's bottom we're gonna solve this case. How do you suggest we do that? <laughs> Easy. Extraction. DNA extraction. By the time we're finished, you'll be able to extract DNA within the comfort of your own classroom. Deoxyribonucleic acid, DNA, is a molecule that encodes the genetic instructions used in the development and functioning of all organisms. It is found in the cell's nucleus, which is bound by a nuclear membrane. In order to extract the DNA, we must utilize a combination of physical and chemical changes. This allows us to separate the cells, break through two membranes, and separate the DNA from all the other cellular content in a sample. On its most basic level, the structure of DNA is similar to a ladder. The outside frame is composed of alternating sugar and phosphate groups, while the steps are made up of different nitrogenous bases. Imagine a set of blocks that has only four shapes, or an alphabet that has only four letters. DNA is a long string of these blocks or letters. A single ladder of DNA is way too small for us to see, even with a classroom microscope. The basic principles of strawberry DNA extraction are similar to the process used to extract DNA from any other sample, including human DNA. First, we'll need to gather our materials. That is one pimped out lab table. 50 milliliter plastic tube, resealable plastic bag, transfer pipette, coffee filters, small beaker, five milliliters of rubbing alcohol, plastic funnel, small centrifuge tube, and of course, strawberries. Place a strawberry into the resealable plastic bag and close tightly. You can leave the green leafy bit on or remove it. Use a small beaker to measure out 20 milliliters of the extraction solution and pour into the bag. Remove as much of the air from the bag as possible and seal tightly. Using your hands, gently squish the strawberry in the extract solution for about five minutes. Be careful though, you don't want to bust your bag. When you're done, place the bag on the table. Remove the lid from the 50 milliliter tube and place the funnel on top. Place a piece of a coffee filter inside your funnel, covering the inside of the funnel. Carefully pour your mixture of strawberry and extraction solution into the tube through the coffee filter in the funnel. You may want to enlist the help of a neighbor to keep your tube from falling over. I'll help you with that tube, and I'll be your neighbor. Once all of your strawberry soup has filtered through the coffee filter, remove the funnel and dispose of the filter and the solid bits left behind. Add approximately five milliliters of cold rubbing alcohol to your tube, using the graduations on the side as a guide. Keep your tube at eye level and observe what happens. It's very important that you keep your tube as still as possible. Place the tip of the transfer pipette about an inch into the solution. Keeping the tube at eye level, gently swirl the pipette around. Use the pipette to remove a small sample of the DNA and transfer it to the small centrifuge tube. Really? That's it? That was easy. Why don't you explain how the extraction solution works? Good idea. It's quite simple, actually. It's magic. No. Well, if it's so simple, why don't you tell us? Okay. The shampoo in the extraction solution works by dissolving the phospholipids in the cellular membrane as well as the nuclear membrane. The salt in the extraction solution sticks to some of the resulting cellular debris, allowing it to precipitate out of the solution and become large enough to be filtered out using a coffee filter. Bam! Science is magic. What do I do with this now, you might ask? Now that we have isolated our DNA, we can use biotechnology to perform additional analysis and create genetic profiles. These profiles can be used in the real world for paternity testing, personalized medicine, or to incriminate potential suspects during an investigation. Humans have about 99.9% .9 of their DNA in common. 
even two people who don't look anything alike. The 0.1% of our DNA that differs is enough to make each one of us unique individuals. So remember, check out ncbionetwork.org to learn more about how to be a magician of science. Like me.